Hi guys, you're here with your host Top Table Ben and in this video I'm going to show you how I've been painting my Death Guard to a reasonable tabletop standard. So before I get down to the nitty gritty of painting this model completely, I have entirely covered it in Death Guard Green. Now you can do this with a brush, but I decided to use a spray can. The first colour I'm going to be using is Lead Belcher. Now this is a very good solid silver colour by Games Workshop and I'm going to be applying this with a size 1 artist focused brush. Make sure you water down your paint slightly and with this Lead Belcher I am going to be applying it to all the armoured areas, all the chainmail, all the blades and about 50% of the metallic parts on the model. Now the reason that I'm only painting 50% of the model at this stage will become apparent a little bit later on. Don't worry if you overseal slightly onto other areas of the model because you can touch that up with some Death Guard Green later on. Now what you will notice throughout this guide is there will be bits that I tend to miss because these are beautifully detailed models and there are loads and loads of different areas and different bits on them uh, which means that they are very easy to forget which bits need painting uh, so occasionally I do go back and apply the base colours as necessary. Once I'm done painting all the silver areas, I'm going to be moving on to using Bugman's Glow. And with this, I'm going to be covering any areas that are fleshy, or the tentacles, or the weird tongues, uh, or anything like that on the model. Now you will find that there are lots of these kind of hidden away in various sections on the model. So I would really highly advise that you go and take a really close look at the models and make sure that you're finding every single bit. It is easy enough to go back and paint them afterwards, but as soon as you've got the paint out now, you may as well get this done now. As is always the advice with these paints, it's always worth watering the paint down slightly and going back and doing a second lighter coat afterwards. In that way, you get a nice solid base colour. Now the next colour I'm going to be using is Rakar Flesh and the bits that I'm going to be colouring in with this are the horns or any of the bone sections that you might find on this model. As we found with the other areas, there can be horns and bones coming out of every part of this model, so make sure that you're checking the feet, the legs, the head, and all over the body. By now the model is coming on nicely and is really starting to take shape. The next colour we're going to be using is Corvus Black. 
and we are going to be using this to coat the casing of the bolter. Now you don't necessarily need to use Corvus black for this, however I like to use this because it's a slightly lighter black uh, and when you put some of the washes on that we're going to be doing later, it really kind of helps bring out the texture of the model. What I found with Corvus Black is that it is quite a thin paint, so it is definitely worth going back and doing a second thin coat on top of your original coat. So the last colour that we are going to be applying to the bolter is some Steel Legion Drab just on this wooden stock. You can also use this opportunity to paint any other wooden sections of the model, such as the handles of hand grenades. The next step on this model is to finish off the metallics, and for this I'm going to be using Balthazar Gold. I'm going to be using this to paint the shoulder pad trim and any other areas that I want to be a metallic colour on this model. There are a lot of sections on the backpack which kind of fit this criteria, so it's, make, it's worth making sure that you're checking all over the model for these areas. I've always found the coverage of Balthazar Gold to be a little bit on the patchy side, so you'll definitely need to do two coats of this paint. With all the base colours done, this model is starting to really take shape now. Now what I would advise at this stage is that you thoroughly check the model and make sure that you've covered everywhere that you need to. It's going to be very difficult to go back and make any corrections once we move on to the next step. Next up we're going to be applying our first shade and for this I'm going to be using Agrax Earthshade and applying it with a medium shade brush. For me, this is probably one of the most rewarding steps because this is where you see the model really start to come together. Apply the wash straight out of the bottle and apply it in a thin layer across the entire model, trying to make sure that it doesn't pull too much in any of the crevices. By using a slightly larger brush, you can make sure that you've got a little bit more control over the paint, and if you do get a little bit uh, building up in any of the corners, you can use the brush to wick that away. Once the Agrax has fully dried, you'll be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Now the model has a lot more depth, but we're gonna add a little bit more and giving it a really insipid yellowish tone by adding Seraphim Sepia. Now I'm going to be applying this in exactly the same way as I applied the Agrax Earthshade over the entire model. When this dries you'll be left with a slightly yellowish tinge to this model. Now once the Seraphim Sepia dries, you'll be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Now in all honesty, you could use this as tabletop standard, and I would be quite happy to use this as a rank and file paint job. However, for this model, I am going to be pushing it a little bit further, and I'm going to be using Strachan Green to start picking out some of the highlights of the armour. I'm going to be applying this colour along the highest ridges and edges of the green coloured armour.
You can also use it to highlight any cracks or damage to the armor, especially around these teeth. It is really worth taking your time with this stage because doing a good finish at this stage will really, really make this model pop. Next, I'm going to be highlighting all the fleshy areas and I'm going to be using Bugman's Glow again for this. Although I'm using the same colour as previously, because of the washes that we've already applied to the model, they will be a lot darker. So the Bugman's Glow will be standing out. Make sure when you're applying any highlights that you are definitely thinning down your paints because you will get a much, much better finish. Very easy to go overboard with highlights, so just make sure that you are only painting in the highest and most raised edges of the model. The next highlight we are going to be applying is Rakarth Flesh, and again we are going to be applying this to all the areas that we have previously painted with Rakarth Flesh. Now personally I like to apply this in thin stripes along these parts of the models, especially on the horns, because this will give you a much, much more bone-like finish. The next highlight that we're applying is Administratum Grey and I'm going to be applying this just along the very fine edges of the bolter casing. Next up we're moving back onto the silver areas and we're going back to a lead belcher this time. Again with this colour you just want to be applying it to the very tips of the silver areas, anywhere that would catch the sun. You also want to make sure that you're catching just the edges of the blade, just to make sure that it looks like the edges are sharp. Next highlight we're applying is Brass Scorpion and we're just going to apply this to the very edges of the brassy slash coppery areas that we've already painted. You can also use it to pick out any rivets in the edge of the power armour. Final two highlights we're going to be applying are Cadian Flesh Tone and Ogryn Camo. First up, I'm going to be using the Ogryn Camo to highlight just the very, very highlighted edges of the armour. At this stage, less is very much more, so be very selective about the areas that you apply this paint. As we did with the Ogryn Camo, apply the Cadian Flesh Tone just to the very, very highlighted raised edges of the flesh areas. The 
You can also use Cajun Flesh Tint to pick out the really nasty looking boils on this model. And that's this Plague Marine done. Base him as you've done with the rest of your army and add him to your gruesome ranks. Although in this guide I have painted a Plague Marine, you can paint pretty much any of your Death Guard characters or elites in exactly the same way. So guys, what do you think? It is a very, very simple painting guide, don't get me wrong. It's not going to win you any golden demons, um, but it's worked really well for me for getting my Death Guard uh, and my Plague Marines onto the table as quickly as possible. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you pop that down in the comments below. If you've got any feedback or anything that you think I could be changing, again, let me know about it because the only way I can make these videos better is for you letting me know what you would like to see. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're clicking that subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.